Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a re-review of one of the most popular microphones that's currently available on the market after I've been using it for six years. If you weren't able to guess by the title of the video or the microphone in frame, this is the Shure SM7B, which is a broadcast dynamic microphone. If you are interested, it will cost around $400. And like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. And for this review, I'm running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set just at around 4 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And I do want to note, I am not using a fed head, I am not using a cloud lifter, and I am not using any inline preamp. This is running directly into the interface. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you are going to get the microphone. You'll get two windscreens, one being a normal one, the other being a big fat foam one. You'll get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a backplate to cover the switches on the rear of the microphone. You'll get a cable tie, a little bit of documentation, and a sticker. Damn you stickers! Stickers are the worst! Then as far as the build quality, I have zero complaints. I've been beating the crap out of it for six years, and it's still running like a champ. It does have an all-metal body as well as a metal mesh grill underneath the foam, which does not have any give to it. The mounting system is made out of metal as well, and you have knobs on both sides to loosen or tighten the mount down. On the end of the mount, you'll find a 5 8 inch threaded microphone stand mount, as well as an XLR port. And on the rear of the microphone, you have two switches, the first one being a high pass or low cut filter, and the second one being a presence boost, and if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Mexico and China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 Hz to 20 kHz, a sensitivity of negative 59 dB, and an impedance of 150 ohms. Now I'm spinning around the SM7B to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there we go, and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now let's test the plosive rejection of the microphone with the provided windscreens. Please bring pizza pronto, 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 please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing, and gosh darn it does it sound good right on top of it. Now I'm three inches off of the SM7B with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here's how it's sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, which you should never do. About two feet away from the microphone, which you should really never do. And about four feet away from the microphone, which you should really, 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 really never do. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the game and folk, now I'm typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. I know the microphone is blending in, so just so you can see it's there. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room, just a couple inches away from my mouth. And now, because the microphone comes on this mount and you're not able to use a shock mount, I want to see how it rejects shocks. So I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And then I'll tap on the boom arm. Now because I want to be thorough, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now
Now I want to demonstrate how the provided foam windscreens impact the sound that's being recorded. So currently I have the windscreens off of the microphone, just the metal grill is there and here is how it's sounding. Now I have the thinner foam windscreen installed and you can hear a slight change in the tone. It darkens it up a little bit, but it doesn't do too much to the sound. It's not the most noticeable thing. And now I've installed the big fat foam windscreen and you should be able to hear quite a big decrease in the top end. It really tames a lot of that down. For some people, they may like that. In other cases, it may darken it up a little bit too much and you may want to stick to the smaller foam windscreen or using the microphone just with an external pop filter as opposed to either of the foam windscreens, which do dampen the top end. Now I want to demonstrate the filter switches on the rear of the microphone. Up until now, the microphone has been in the neutral mode and this is what it's been sounding like. Now I've switched on the high pass or low cut filter. You should hear quite a big change in the lower frequencies. It really thins out my voice. It really removes anything going on down there. I personally think for spoken word, it's a bit aggressive, but it's there if you need it. This is the high pass filter. Just as a palate cleanser, we're back in the neutral mode so you can hear how this sounds before we switch on the presence boost. And now I've switched on that presence boost switch and again, you should hear quite a big difference. A lot more top end information, a lot more forwardness in the mids, a bit more nasalness or nasality or na whatever you want to call it. Quite a big change in tone by switching on that presence boost switch, but there it is. And here is another palate cleanser. We are back in the neutral mode before we try one last setup of those switches. And here it is, my least favorite sounding version of the SM7B, that high pass or low cut and the presence boost are engaged. And I just think this sounds a bit too thin and a bit too boosted in the top end simultaneously. It just doesn't work in my opinion, but in case you need it, it's there. And now we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the Shure SM7B and a bunch of other broadcast or dynamic microphones on the market so you can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hopefully make a more educated decision on whether or not this microphone is right for you. Like always, we'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. This is the SM7B, three inches off of the end of the mic. Gain it four o'clock on the 18i20 and here's how it sounds. And first up, I am on the Behringer XM8500. This goes for around $20. I am three inches off of this thing. My gain is still at around four o'clock. And here's how it's sounding. Make sure to check the lower third because this has a significantly hotter output than the 7B and just check how much I'm boosting each of these in post. Next microphone. Back again on the SM7B. Here is how it's sounding. Let's jump to another microphone. Now I'm on the Shure SM58, which is a handheld dynamic microphone. This costs $100, I'm three inches off. Gain still at four o'clock and here's how it's sounding. Let's jump back to the 7B and do a bunch more comparisons. For a third time, we're back on the SM7B. We are in the neutral mode, nothing has changed. Here's how it sounds, let's jump to another mic. Now we're on another $100 handheld dynamic mic. This is the SE Electronics V7. I am three inches off. My gain is at four o'clock. This goes for $110, I believe, but that's how it sounds. Let's jump to the 7B and do a lot more of these things that we're doing. Back on the SM7B so you can hear how this sounds. Let's jump to another microphone and hear how it compares to that. Now we are on the Rode Procaster, which is another broadcast dynamic microphone. This costs around $230. $230, please enunciate, Bandrew. I am three inches off. My gain is still at four o'clock. Check the lower third and let's jump to the next one. All right, again, just in case you forgot how it sounded, this is the SM7B neutral mode. No changes. Let's jump to another one. Now we're on the Bayer Dynamic M201TG, which is an instrument microphone that I think sounds awesome on voice. This costs $300. I am three inches off. My gain is at four o'clock still. Nothing has changed. And here is how this sounds. Did I say 300 bucks if I did not mention? Let's jump back to the 7B. Back on the SM7B again. Here is how this sounds. This is the one that I just bought. Let's jump to another microphone and do more comparisons. 
Now I'm on the original SM7B that I bought six years ago to hopefully determine if the microphone changes in tone after six years of use and abuse. Let me know in the comments down below if there is a difference. And now that I've said that, I realize there's no way to know whether or not the change is from use and abuse or if it's just a change in the manufacturing over a seven year period. We'll never know. Back to the new SM7B. In case you were unable to guess what was going to happen, we're back on the SM7B again. Nothing has changed, same gain, same distance, same filter settings. Let's jump to another microphone. Now I'm on the Rode Broadcaster, which is a broadcast condenser microphone. I do not have the high pass filter engaged, but I do have 48 volts on and my gain was decreased to 12 o'clock. Here is how this is sounding. This goes for $420, lol, $420, I get it, weed jokes and all that fun stuff, really cool. But this is how the broadcaster sounds. Let's jump back to the 7B and do more comparisons. All right, back on the SM7B again. I run out of things to say in these, but this is the microphone that we're reviewing. Here's how it sounds. How does it compare to the next one? We'll never know unless we jump to it, so let's jump to it. Now we're on the Electro Voice RE20. This goes for $400. I think this is the SM7B's main competitor. It's the one that I see a lot of people switching to or saying, I don't want the SM7B, I want the RE20 instead. So here is how it sounds in neutral mode. I don't know why people sound like that. I don't think they actually do. But this is the RE20 and how it compares to the SM7B. Which one do you like better? Let's jump back to the SM7B and do some more comparisons. All right, if you could not have guessed that we were going to be back on the SM7B, I think it's time for you to leave. Don't actually leave, finish watching the video, but come on. You had to have been able to deduce that we were going to be back on the SM7B. Next microphone. Now I am on the Earthworks Icon Pro, which goes for $500. This is another broadcast condenser microphone, three inches off, 48 volts on. My gain is at around 1130, and here is how this sounds. Let's do a couple more comparisons. I don't know how many more we have to do. I think we have two left. But this is the SM. Why did I say this? This is the SM7B. Let's jump to the tenth microphone, I believe. Now I am on the Earthworks Ethos, which is another broadcast condenser microphone, meaning 48 volts is on. My gain is at 12 o'clock. I am three inches off, and this costs $700. A broadcast condenser, which is quite a bit more expensive than the SM7B. Which one do you like the sound of better? Let's jump back to the 7B and do one final comparison. And if I am not mistaken, this is going to be the final comparison. Y'all know what it's going to be. It is the control from video to video. But first, this is the SM7B. Now let's jump to the final microphone in this comparison. And finally, we are on the Neumann U87AI. This is a multi-pattern studio condenser microphone. Cardioid mode, no filters, no pads engaged three inches off, gain at 11 o'clock, and this costs $3,600. So it's not a fair comparison, but this is a control from video to video, as I just said. And I do like hearing how this compares to every microphone out there, because why not? Why not do it? All right, that is it for the comparisons. Now we have the music test, so let's do that now. <laughs> Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? Now normally I would wish you a very happy new year, but I did that at the very end of 2020, no, 2019, and we saw what happened, so I'm not going to say anything. 
because I don't want to find out that I'm some kind of witch or wizard or warlock. So whatever this next year brings, we'll deal with it. We'll burn the bridges when we come to them and we'll, we'll do whatever we need to do to survive. Okay, let's go to the conclusion. It has been seven years since I tried an SM7B and six and a half years of owning one and using it regularly, and I still absolutely love it, and it still ranks right near the top of my all-time favorite mics. And first up as far as pros, I think that the smooth sound of smooth smooth sound of this microphone makes it really easy to listen to, especially over long periods of time. I also think that the shock and handling noise rejection on this microphone is pretty good. I've never run into any issues with bumping of my desk or handling noise as I move the microphone around. Never had any issues with that. The plosive rejection on this microphone is also pretty darn acceptable with either of the windscreens. The proximity effect on this thing is just something special. I absolutely love it when you get right on top of the microphone. It just sounds so darn good. And if you need some tone switches, you do have a bit of versatility with the high pass filter and that presence boost. But then as far as cons, I'll point out the obvious. This is an incredibly quiet microphone, and that means that you actually need to pay attention to the preamps and the interface that you're buying. With that being said, though, I do believe that the majority of mid-tier interfaces are more than capable, whether it be Focusrite. I'm driving this with a Focusrite 18i20 second gen, the prior generation, the Mo2, M2, M4, any of those, SSL2, 2 Plus, too much gain sometimes. You can clip this thing really easily. Or Audient, that's the other one. Really great preamps in all of those and more than capable of driving this microphone. Another issue that I noticed is sometimes with the placement of the cable, it can be a bit of a headache with boom arms. The Rode PSA-1 comes to mind. When this microphone is mounted and you have it on the PSA-1, you're not able to rotate the microphone very far because it will get snagged on the cable, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. Pain, pain in the butt. That's what I was trying to say. And also, I do know a lot of people hate the external cable on the microphone because it does pose a risk. It's something that can get snagged on something, and if you rip it out, then you gotta send it for repair or learn to solder and fix it yourself. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, if you throw on the presence boost, I think that it absolutely works. It doesn't have the same bite or aggression as the SM57, but I think that can be a benefit. It offers a smoother sound, which I think can be pleasing. You do have a controlled low end. If you want a bit more, you can really put the mic right on top of the speaker. The mids do get a bit more forward, so you have a more mid-forward sound with that presence boost engaged. And then you have a tame top end, a tame treble and air, so it doesn't get overly piercing or sharp sounding. Really all around a nice sound on the electric. Next up on the acoustic guitar, it's definitely not my favorite because I prefer microphones that have a bit more life to them, a bit more extension into the treble and air to get that articulation and realism, but I do think that it can work for that application. The reason that I'm saying that is I was watching a Rhett Scholl video and somebody sent in a clip of them playing acoustic using the SM7B and it sounded absolutely amazing. So I'll go ahead and link that video in the description if you want to check it out because I do think it can work, just not going to be my first pick. Next up for singing, I think this works extremely well for that application. If you want a darker and smoother sound, it does have a controlled low end if you back off a little bit, but if you want more warmth, you can get right on top of it and engage that proximity effect. When you throw on the presence boost, it really helps your voice pop a bit more. And then you have the tame treble and air frequencies, so it's not as bright as a lot of other dynamics, but I think that works in its favor because it does allow you to get that smoother, easier to listen to sound if that's what you're going for. And finally, for spoken word, this microphone is one of my favorites for that application because I do find it so easy to listen to, and I think it's easy to listen to because it is a relatively smooth microphone, and also it lacks a lot of sibilance. But as far as the overall tone, I know I will be repeating myself. If you want a bit more of a controlled low end, you can back off three to six inches. If you want a lot more warmth, you can get right on top of it and get that broadcasty sound. 
Also, you are able to get a relatively neutral sound, especially for a dynamic, if you run it in neutral mode without that high pass and without that presence boost. And when you listen to the top end of this microphone, it is undeniably darker than a lot of its competitors, but I think that's a good thing because it does remove the issue of sibilance for a lot of people, and you're still getting plenty of articulation, definitely not going to compete with a condenser or anything like that, but you're not getting a sound that's so dark and muffled that it becomes difficult to understand the words that you're trying to say. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Shure SM7B? Being that I've been using it for six and a half years, it should be no surprise that absolutely I would recommend it with a couple of caveats. If you're looking for a microphone to run multiple feet away from your face, do not buy this microphone. It is not made for that. This microphone excels when it's no more than six inches away from your face for speaking, so keep that in mind. If you want a boom microphone, do not get this mic. Also, the second caveat, you need to make sure that your preamps are capable of driving this thing. With those caveats out of the way, if you record music or if you run a recording studio, you're going to end up with one of these at one point, it's only a matter of time, or you already own one. I've seen these used on everything, they are studio workhorses, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, drums, bass, vocals, anything and everything you can throw this at, it's going to work. So if you make music and you have the budget, I absolutely recommend it. Now let's talk about spoken word. If you like darker sounding microphones, smoother sounding microphones that I believe are very easy to listen to, I absolutely recommend it. But if you don't like the darker sound of this, don't be afraid to get a different microphone. There are many other options in this budget and below that sound incredible. But now I want to share some speculation about why I think this microphone has become so popular over the last couple of years. First one being, it looks good on camera. I hate to say it because that should not matter, but it seems to matter now, and I believe that's the first thing that draws people in. But I don't think it could be popular solely based on the looks. And the second reason, which I think is much more important, is the sound of this microphone. Is it going to be everybody's favorite? No. But as I mentioned, it's smooth, it's easy to listen to, it's inoffensive, it's non-sibilant, and it's really hard to find a voice that sounds terrible through this microphone. Will it always be the best fit? Absolutely not. There are going to be microphones that fit with people's voices much better than this, but I think that inoffensive nature, or maybe I should say non-fatiguing, tone of this microphone is really a huge selling point, really a big draw. Because I can listen to most people speak into this microphone for hours right out of the box without them needing to learn a bunch of post-production tricks on DSing and proper EQ and this and that to make their audio sound pleasing and non-fatiguing. I think that is another reason why this has become so popular. But enough waxing poetic about why I think the microphone is popular. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Why do you think this microphone has blown up in popularity over the last couple of years? And that's all that I've got for you today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, go ahead and subscribe. Click that logo down beneath me. And if you want to support the channel and become one of the amazing people over here you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the five dollar tier or higher really does help me continue to bring you these videos so until next time thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening i will talk to you next week bye